I'm really excited to be here today with you. I want to tell you a little bit about our journey at Lowe's with our Lowe's Innovation Labs through AR and VR. Um, it began back in 2013, so we've got some history. Um, but so excitedly to, to introduce you um, in a little bit to our key partner um, from Neurons, Inc. And they have been a partner on this journey with us from day one. And we've learned so much in how we've structured the partnership and how we've cultivated and nurtured the relationship. And what that's brought us has been uh, exponential in terms of the ability to capture insights and generate them into action for our business. So we know choice happens so quickly. We know that. Researchers here, we know. It happens in seconds. So we really know we need to be there and really understand at that moment when there's a stimulus in terms of what happens. <coughs> Conscious mind. We've heard heard a lot about this at the conference um, these past couple of days. Um, limit, there are many limitations of our traditional research. We can ask consumers what they think, how they feel. They try to tell us. Sometimes they're being honest. Sometimes they can't tell us. Um, they want to, but they can't tell us. Sometimes they don't want to tell us. So we knew, going back in this journey, that we needed to really understand what was going on in the subconscious, particularly when you expose someone to a totally new experience, some technology they've never experienced before. We knew we needed some different ways to, to measure um, their reaction to that experience so we could test and really learn. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our journey. And you've heard about some of this. I know in the press we've got a, an awesome leader in the Lowe's Innovation Labs, Kyle Nell, who's a wonderful spokesperson who really brings things to light for us and is very visionary. Now, stepping back in 2013, 2013-2014, we, we tested the first hollow room experience. Mike and I and the rest of his team in our can one of our Canada stores, um, trying to figure out how we were going to do some neuro work to really to flesh out some things that, that we knew consumers would feel, but we wouldn't necessarily hear from them. So back to that original hollow room, we had the iPad, and the consumer worked with the technician to develop their remodeled bath in a visual, virtual space. And then they had to walk through this 10 by 10 room to project it up on the, on the walls. And boy, it was cutting edge and really cool. So we wanted to understand what people thought. And what they told us was, it is really cool. But when we really started to look at the brain and the neurometrics, we were finding we had some things we needed to overcome. So fast forward, we learned from that, um, went on and tested a real high def experience of the hollow room in a kiosk environment with Oculus Rift. So that high def experience, we got some reaction to that, as well as a less high def or more low def experience, but one that they could take home. They could take home their bath redesign show it to their spouse or significant other. What do you think? Oh, I don't like it. All right, let's go back to the store. And they did. And then they experienced it together in high def. Um, from there, we've had some hollow lens experiences. So you see a lot of different technology along the way. So we're learning pros and cons of those technologies. We're seeing leaps and bounds in terms of improvements all along the way, as well as the learnings and taking them in and test and learn and test and learn and improve our experiences. So with our hollow lens, um, Having that experience visually, you're totally immersed. You're clicking, you're changing, you're moving colors. And you can bring your partner and see, oh, I don't like that brown. No, that's taupe. OK, let's, let's make a change then. We want blue. Um, most recently, we've been t testing Lowe's Vision Pro. Mike has a little video from that, um, where a consumer can accurately measure that space, their kitchen, their room. We can have a, an associate go out to their home. They measure that space, and then they can say, these Lowe's products, slide them in, they fit into that space. So you really get that accurate, and you're layering on that virtual reality and augmented reality, getting us that mixed reality experience. Um, most recently, we've been testing a hollow room how-to clinic, which is a suite of um, how-to experiences. The first one that's out right now is a um, bath retiling experience, um, and whereby consumers learn how to tile a bath tile a shower, and how that feels a little bit with the muscle memory there. That's a very short synopsis of our, our journey and just some key high spots. So let me tell you a little bit, I think I pressed the wrong button, there we go, about the partnership. 
and our applied neuro research journey um, with loads of innovation labs and with our neurons team um, and what we've learned along the way. And stepping back to 2013, we knew we needed a new approach and we knew we wanted to jump into applied neuro and we knew we wanted to develop a long-term partner partnership, long-term commitment, um, and we knew we wanted frequent measurement. At any one point in time, we have a neuro study going on. We pretty much are constantly recruiting, fielding, analyzing, learning, refining the experience pretty much at one time. I think last two weeks we've had two. So it's, it's a very frequent ongoing um, commitment. We knew we wanted transparency and really importantly that common language. There were some missteps we had along the way where we didn't necessarily have things defined. Um, part of it was us not fully re um, articulating our objectives um, and really getting us ourselves to those common goals common output, common objective. So we've come a long way there. Another key learning is doing a, the applied neuro in those early proof of concept stages. At the beginning we said, oh, let's wait till we get this clunky experience more refined. Um, we know our cognitive load would be off the, out of the, off the charts if we tested it right now. We need to bring it down here. But what we found when we did that, there were things we missed along the way, places we would have refined the experience, and we would have gotten to a, a a, we got to a further place along our development curve by doing research all along those, in those early stages and all along the way. One key thing we've done is really to integrate both with our applied implicit measurements, some explicit measurement, and I'll give you an example, just a recent example that if we hadn't um, included kind of our traditional battery of questions, we may not have understood this as well. Um, and vice versa. We um, tested in the how-to experience um, this level of confidence, and I'm gonna go out and take on um, the shower tiling. And we, we heard from consumers, and one of the things we measured in the neuro research, we, they really learned how to do it. But when we asked them, yeah, I think, yeah, this is really cool, yeah, yeah, yeah but in the end, they probably wouldn't have done that with initial experience. They wouldn't have gone out and taken on that how-to, or taken on that tiling project. So we really needed to refine that experience a little further so that we were um, delivering more confidence out of the training process. Um, and the other thing we've stepped back is really take a look at what have we learned in all this time, kind of in learning and development, in how consumers react to technology, do they react to new technology differently today than they used to, and we found a lot of richness and insights along the way that then helped drive our experiences as we re redefine them now and continue to define them going forward. So with that, I will turn it over to Mike Storm who can tell you a little bit about how we actually do the research um, day to day. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Um, okay, so I'm Mike Storm. I'm from NeuronSync. I'm the CEO of NeuronSync. And uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit more about the magic things that we help Lowe's get further with, with their crazy innovation that they're doing. Um, so right here you can see a video of a person sitting here. He's wearing a very big virtual reality headset. We know the Oculus Rift, but at the same time he's actually wearing a brain scanner. We're having an EEG on here. So that means that we're testing people inside the actual situation when they're setting up the tiles, when they're doing things in there. We're testing how do they respond unconsciously. And how can we take that away to understand where we're doing good and where we're doing bad? For this case, we're not having an eye tracking glass in there, but for other cases, as the one I'm gonna show you later on, we actually have eye tracking glasses on too to understand both where are people looking and how do they respond. So to tell you about the metrics that we use, um, well-established metrics within academia, it's not something that we have developed or made up, it's well-established. And as you can see, the first one I wanna to talk to is the more tangible one, so focus or attention. Um, we all know that attention is where we're looking and also where we're not looking. That means that we miss some information and we see some information. This is highly important to understand if the very important messages in an experience of learning, for example, is seen and noticed, or is it missed because of some other information that was taking your, your attention at that one time. So attention is the first metric. 
The second one is arousal. So I guess you've all tried this, being aroused, sweating in your hands, your heart starts beating. This could happen when you're fly, uh, afraid of flying. It could also happen if you see a person that you're highly aroused about. So that means that it could both be positive and negative. So that means it's the intensity of an emotion. This is why we have the motivation, as you can see on the other side. So motivation is the valence. Which direction is this emotion going? Is it positive? Is it neutral? Or is it two, it's the negative? So avoidance behavior. And the final one is cognitive load. And this one is extremely interesting, especially with new innovation, new technology, and all the spaces that we're all going into, mobile, smaller screens, everything has to be in one place. The thing is that cognitive load is how much information am I processing at one time? So if I told any one of you to bring up your phone, type to a friend, listen to me, and do a math equation at the same time, you know you couldn't do that. Like multitasking, as we call it. That's impossible. That means that we get too high cognitive load, we get to a breaking point, we break down, we restart. That's how the brain works all the time. So that means if we get people into that situation, we feel stress. So we feel this unconscious stress and feeling of, whoa, that was too much information. I don't want to do that anymore. And that's where we can go in and test people in the scenario to understand, well, whenever this message showed, people actually felt stressed because they were shown other information at the same time. So they didn't know, they didn't know first of all, where to pay attention, but also how to understand the information. And to give you one example of how it can look, as you can see here, this is a person, oh, it seems like the quality is quite off. Okay, well, um, the example is a person, you can see the little red dot up here, which is on the screen that the person is holding. This is the Lowe's Vision Pro that Crystal also talked to. Um, and the person is trying to measure the, the fridge here, and they can do that in all of the kitchens and put in everything they want to. But what's really important here is this is just an, an, a, an example of one person. We normally do a sample of people, put it together and aggregate across them, of course. But for this one, you can see here, we have three different graphs. This is brain responses over time. You have the red one, which is the arousal, so the intensity. You have the green one, which is motivation, so looking at this positive, negative, avoidance, or, in, or in interest. And then you have the final one, which is cognitive load, so how much information is the person processing at one time. And if you could have seen the example here, um, if the quality was better, you could actually see that in the second that the person is trying to click somewhere and it doesn't work right away, you see the cognitive load peak and the motivation drop right after. That means it's, it's a direct measure. We can actually see how a person responds in that one second. So what have we learned over time with all this new innovation that we've done with Lowe's or tested with Lowe's from 2013 all the way to 2017 and beyond that in the future, hopefully, we can see that whenever we bring down cognitive load levels, so this processing information, whenever we bring that down to a level we know is comfortable, is processing, and is interesting, we can see that the motivation automatically starts riding, rising. So we see that people get more interested in learning how to use the product, wanting to use the product, and share the product with others. I think that's pretty much what we wanted to share.